Yes, six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here today to have a quick conversation with you about hay bales, and specifically the weights of bales and the efficient ways in order to handle them. Could really have this conversation with two different groups of people, both the producers of hay bales and the consumers of them. This video is really going to be geared towards the consumer of the bale itself. So I'm going to walk through here with you a little bit and tell you how to handle these things around your farm. There are three different packages of bales, small squares, rounds, and larges. They generally are packaged differently by different machinery for different reasons. Most of those reasons coming down to handling. A larger bale with more weight in it is simply more efficient to move around. By and large, when you're buying hay, for the most part, the heavier the bale is, the less money that you're paying for that bale because of that efficiency of being able to move it around. Small bales are generally more expensive than what larger bales are, but smaller bales are also a lot easier to handle. When we talk about that handling side, by and large, we do a really poor job as a group of people of estimating weights of things. And you can say that about anything, a bucket of dirt, a bucket of stone, and we're terrible with it when it comes to bales. And so you gotta go think through your bales and understand the amount of material, the kind of material, the crop that's going into it, the density of that bale, all can drive the weight of a bale. And for that reason, you can see some really dramatic differences in the weight of different sizes and types of bales. So I'm standing here at the business end of a small square baler. Small square bales are gonna vary in size depending on the size of the bale chamber and the length of the bale that the farmer chooses to make. This portion back here is called a kicker. You've probably seen these things in action before. Once it makes the bale, it goes up into this throwing mechanism which will throw the bale up and into a wagon that's pulled behind it. Because of the smaller size of these bales, they're generally handled by hand and not by machinery. You certainly can spear these things to carry them around, but a lot of guys just choose to grab the strings and pull and carry them. Weight-wise, most of your small squares are gonna come in the 40 to 75 pound range. Again, depending on the density of that bale and the type of material that was baled up. Just like we can vary the size or the length of a bale in a small square baler, we can do the same thing with a round baler as well. This New Holland RB450 here is the most popular size of bale in a 4x5, but you can actually find larger bales as well. So this bigger RB560 over here is a 5x6 that makes a much larger bale with a lot more material in it. This size bale is not very common, especially in areas where we're transporting bales because two of these things across a trailer is gonna make you a wide load. So by and large, a vast majority of people opt for the smaller 4x5 balers. Weight-wise, um, again, we're going to see a lot of variation depending on the density of the bale, the crop that's baled up, and the, uh, the width of the bale. You know, you can bale these things up into different radiuses um, as you're working. The weights of those bales can vary anywhere between about 450 to 500 pounds for the lightest, smallest ones, up to about 1,200 pounds for the biggest. And so again, when we start talking through tractoring requirements in order to move these bales around, this can get really challenging because just knowing that you're buying a round bale really is going to tell you very little about how much tractor you actually need in order to move it. At the most high end of the baling market is big balers, and big balers make some big bales. Um, these are gonna come in a number of different sizes. In our area, three by three and three by four are the most popular. We sell about 50-50 each. There's also some really large four by four balers available as well. Big bales, just like we've talked with these other ones, can really vary a lot in weight depending on the crop that's going into it and the density of it. And so you can get some small three by three bales that are gonna come in at that 800, 900 pound range, but some of our large chrome balers with high density press and packer cutters in them can start to make some bales that are gonna approach nearly 2,000 pounds. Big balers are really cool because this is where a lot of the technology is at in the baler market. You can do a lot of really advanced things with big balers as far as scales and counters and field tagging system and GPS markers with these high production, high volume machines. So once you've found a producer to buy bales from, you're gonna need some kind of way to handle them. Generally that's done with some kind of either a grabber or a spear on the front of your tractor. Now hopefully your machine has a skid steer quick coupler. If it does, you're gonna be able to pin one of these things on very easily and go. 
It's important when you buy one of these that you're buying the right type for the style of bale that you're going to be manipulating. So this style right here is going to have either two or three long spears across the bottom for handling those square bales, right? The spear is going to go the whole way up into the bale and hopefully support the thing across its width. If you're doing round bales though, you generally will have a different style. So you'll have a single long spear in the middle with two prongs down to the left and the right side in order to keep that bale from spinning. And so you're gonna want that. The other style of these is called a hugger. Um, huggers are gonna require a hydraulic function out on the loader in order to grab the bale. And that's gonna have two pieces that are gonna come around and grab and squeeze the bale. It's a nice option for guys who are getting bales that are wrapped because you're not taking a spear and stabbing in and compromising the wrap around your bale. Um, or if you're wrapping very, very dense bales, some of the strongest, best made balers out there can make bales that are dense enough that it's actually hard to push into them with one of these spears. So variable density barrel balers can give you a soft core in the middle to punch a spear into with a dense bale around the outside. That will help a little bit, but you'll be surprised when you get some of those really heavy packed bales that it can be even difficult to shove a big metal spear into it. So once you've established the weight of the bales that you're going to be purchasing and handling, we need to work through exactly what kind of equipment you need in order to be able to move that bale. We've talked through a lot of loader specifications on our channel before. It's an important number to know of what your tractor can safely handle. But this is a place that we really got to watch the kind of load that we're moving, right? So as your loader goes higher, or as the load goes away from the tractor, your loader is gonna be able to lift less and less, less weight. And generally when you're manipulating bales, a lot of times you're going up to those high heights in order to be able to stack them, or you have a, say, four by five round bale that's gonna stick several feet away from the pivot point of your tractor. So just because your tractor says that it may have, say, 700 pounds of lift capacity does not mean you're going to safely be able to manipulate a 700 pound bale. This is one place that you really need to be able Able to exceed the weight of that bale and the capacity of your tractor. So generally the rule of thumb that I'm going to give is you're going to want at least another 25% more or so. So if you've got a thousand pound bale, you don't want to do it a whole lot less than say a 12, 1300 pound lift capacity tractor. It's because you need that little bit of buffer room to go to those heights and to be able to have that bale a little bit further away from the machine. So how much tractor does it take to move some of these bales? Well, a small square bale, hey, no big deal, right? You can take that and throw it in the bucket of just about any tractor because you're only dealing with, say, 100 pounds at the very most. No issue there at all. If we're gonna get into round bales, though, that's where our weights are gonna start to push us into a little bit bigger tractor. In the Kubota line, we're generally gonna say you really don't want anything smaller than about a standard L-series tractor in order to get into round bales. It's not to say that a big B won't do it, it kind of is there, but I get a little worried about the amount of ballast that you need on the back end in order to really be able to do it. So standard L's are kind of your starting point for a round. If you want to get into a heavy round or start to manipulate big bales, now we start to got to get into utility tractors, right? So we're into an M series tractor and, and up from there. You're going to see a similar story here in New Holland's line if we go to the other side of the driveway over here. Uh, the Boomer Compacts in your 30 to 50 horsepower range are going to do just fine for you for a round bale. But as we start to move up into the heavy rounds or a big bale and we start to exceed that thousand pounds or so, moving up into a 75 horse utility tractor or an even bigger machine if you're a producer handling multiple bales is really where you need to be. That's a little bit on bale handling with a tractor. So just in summary, you want to go back and ask your producer and try to get an idea of what kind and what weight of bales they're producing. And then give yourself a little bit of buffer factor there in the capacity of your tractor. So 25% or so, like I said, is kind of my guideline to make sure that you've got enough machine in order to lift that bale and also make sure that you've properly ballasted your loader. You need to have loaded tires or an implement behind you when you start to raise those bales up off the ground, especially if you're going to full height. The higher that load starts to get, the more unstable your machine is. So proper ballasting is really important. And this is a place that's worth really taking seriously and spending some time on because it's very easy to get yourself into some dangerous situations when you're really pushing heavy weights around with your tractor. So if you're going through the buying process for a machine like this, and we can help or if you have parts or service needs for machines that you already have give us a call at Messix. We're available at 800-222-3373 or online at Messix.com. Hey bales and a, hey, I see I'm messing it up already. 
just get make sure you're safe and moving that machine up and always remember machine for real because of these gee whiz of what the average weight I don't know I'm rambling now and I do not like where I'm going <laughs>